Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to do one of those wonderful commentary cards where I explain my thought process behind what I'm doing and why in an attempt to help you get better at the game. Making builds that is based on the map is kind of an important thing to do, by the way. I always say making close and long range weapons part of your build, and it's an important thing. Some maps, though play a little bit closer range. And some maps, like this map, which is probably way too freaking big for a 3v3 map, play a little bit more long range. So, Scouts, Forerunner, things that can deal very good consistent long range damage are gonna be a good choice for this map. Auto Rifles, much better at mid range. Maybe not as good as a, uh, for this map as uh, other maps. Okay, I'm one shot. I got two teammates there, so I don't need to overextend for the kill. That's a mistake a lot of people make. I was one shot, so were they. Why the hell am I gonna go risk my life when I've got two full health people right next to me? Okay, I heard invis, so I gotta be a little bit more cautious right now. It just means you could push out into a spot that you think is safe, and then last second invis happens, and you realize, oh my god, there's a guy there. Hey, look, I cleaned him up. Spike grenade! Killed the guy on the right. I can go after the guy on the left. The good old spike grenade separator. There's two people in this area, but once I put a spike grenade between them, there's now one dude on the right and one dude on the left. We got 13 forerunner shots, baby. I'm gonna look to this lane. I see there's a guy on right on radar. That means they're separated. It means instead of sitting in the middle of them, you need to push someone. Okay, just gonna go after him while I got heal clip, kill clip. Same thing with this guy. Just gonna go after him while I got heal clip, kill clip. Perfect. When the enemy team separates, the worst thing you can do is sit in between them. That gives them all the opportunity to surround you and shoot you from multiple angles. However, if they separate and you aggressively push towards one of the people separated, now the power is in your hands. You are controlling the fight and the people on the other side aren't gonna be able to get to you. Okay, take my cover, use my little war mustache. Don't have my grenade quite yet. Only one enemy is left. Perfect. We're close range, use the close range weapon. But you get what I'm saying? If you sit here while there's a guy on left and a guy on right, they're gonna shoot you from both angles and you just sit there dead. Once you notice that you're surrounded, push someone. Yeah, you might have a 1v1 that you have to win, but maybe your teammates join you and you win the 2v1. It's better than just sitting there isolated. Sitting there idly by, hoping you don't get shot from multiple angles. Forerunner for the mid to long range. Good team shots. Gonna pull out this sidearm because I recognize this guy was jumping over. So Radar told me to pull out this sidearm there. I knew there was a guy up here. But as I approached this angle, I saw on my radar him pr pushing over. So I know he's about to show up right next to me. So I swapped to the close range. Use radar, dudes. If that guy doesn't move over there on radar, I'm gonna use my forerunner because I know he's long range. Once I see on radar, he's pushing right up to me. Pew! Close range weapon. Ready for the fight. How goes it? It goes well, man. Hey, look, solos. It's always such a blessing when you play solos in solos. Okay, three shotgunners and lots of scouts. They've got the long range, they've got the close range. But I gotta recognize that they will have the ability to kill me if I'm really close range. So this Helio, when I'm in Helio fights, I wanna stay far enough away that a shotgun won't kill me, but close enough that I'm dealing good damage. Let's see if we can catch one rotating. We can. This gun's just so freaking consistent. If you know how to aim well, ooh. Okay, I would like to protect this revive, so pushing over towards it will prevent them from getting an angle on the revive. Also, it provides a flank so that they have multiple angles they gotta protect themselves from. So that's why I pushed this side. Two good reasons. Once I got that pick, pushing that side makes it so they can't just get the res, but also with my teammates being outside, and me being outside on the left and them on the right, it's going to be really hard for that enemy team to find cover if they're weak. Should have the forerunner out. I only got three shots. I just saw them put an overshield titan wall down. I can use this wall for cover here. So this allows me to kind of push up. I do have my cover. And I can just melt that wall and get rid of his cover. Only problem with that, which I was going to call out but didn't have time... If there's somebody in the back of the map over there, I'm, in, I'm exposed. This is a totally new map for me. I will make some mistakes. Just not fully understanding angles and making bad pushes and stuff. I will make some mistakes. That was not one of them. This area is a good place to be when they're over there. But if somebody shows up there, you now have no cover at all. 
Just none. Okay. They expect me probably to go for the same pick. So instead, I'm going to follow my teammates. But now that I'm half, I kind of have to play passive. Okay, I'm going to jump over here. Try to use my Helio. See if I have an opportunity. Now that my teammate has a pick, I'm just going to play with him. We're both invis. They might not know we're here. We know they have shotguns. And they're just throwing endless void abilities at us. So I'm just probably screwed. They did good. I didn't know exactly where the other guy went and if he was still there or not. I would have more aggressively pushed if I had realized that guy was alone. But they just kept tossing abilities at us. I'm going far right. Because I've gotten picked from this angle before. Not realizing it was an angle. I want to do it to somebody else. Look at this angle. Anybody shows up here, I'm ready. See? And now that they're in a 2v3, I'm going to start pushing up a little bit. Only one enemy is left. I don't know if he has shotgun Only ammo, left. but I do know all three of them are using shotguns. So guess what I'm not doing? Walking right there. That's why remembering their builds is kind of important. Yeah. You never want to put yourself in the range the enemies want you in. They have shotguns. They want you walking right up to them so they can just easily hit you. That guy was just begging me to walk forward. But I say to the range that Helio would work and a range that shotgun wouldn't. And that's why I won that. Putting a smoke there. Going to make sure there's no one right. No one right means I can push up left. Not worry about getting hit from behind. Four runners just so good. Only one enemy is left. I've got a really good call out, friends. Don't fly off the map. One minute left, my friend. That's a good helpful tip for you. That guy needs to watch more commentary cards. Guess what? We're weak. So while we're weak, let's start capping the zone. What? You don't want me capping the zone? I was one shot anyway, bro. Okay, he's got chaperone perk, so I'm not going to walk anywhere close. They're going to get a revive here, but we're close enough to cap in the zone that it's fine. My teammate, by the way, in that spot, should have either capped the zone with me so we got it faster or guarded the res. It worked out anyway, but like... In his shoes there, you either need to be guarding the res or ca helping cap the zone. Not just standing there. I only have two more Forerunner bullets, so I gotta try to kill this guy. Boom. I didn't have enough for a kill, so I had to try to kill the guy while he was weak. Nice. Good win. I guess it's easy if you go against bots. Yes, I uh, have bot-based matchmaking where I only play bad players. Wait, plot twist. We all play the same fucking people, bro. If you are having a hard time winning games and it just seems like every time the enemy team's better, it's probably because you're the bot. No, get out of the playlist duos. By the way, Jake, you only play bots. This guy is an opponent because he's on uh, this. He's a solo, so he's an opponent. This guy is a 2KD. All right, so we're playing duos and we know the solo is really good. So we basically have to play a lot more tight, recognizing that when we're weak, these guys not only are a duo and they'll be able to communicate it, but their other dude's a very good player. So they will capitalize on opportunities. So we have to play a little bit tighter and not accidentally put ourselves in a bad spot. I'm still going to see if I can get a pick right off the rip. And my teammates were there too. Come on, Spike Nade. I want to cut off their escape. Sandwich them. Dude, my teammates went crazy with me in the team shots. Anybody wondering why I went right? I felt like surrounding them and preventing an escape was the best bet, knowing that they were already weak. If I push left with my team, we leave the entire right side open for them to rotate out. If I go right and they're already weak, well, they're surrounded while weak. The hell are they going to do? I'm going to start pushing up a little bit. There's one that's going left. Let me see if I can catch him off guard. Yep. The guy probably thought he was on a flank, but I recognized it, so I didn't let him do anything. Only one enemy is left. That's one shot. Let's go, baby. I knew that was going to be tough for the guy who was on the flank because all three of us were near each other. So it was like one in three chance that if I challenged, he'd be looking right at me. Very good chance he'd be looking out at someone else. We only have two... 400 shots. So unless we team shot, we're not getting a pick here. And we team shot. Dude, my team is doing great. Okay, I'm gonna start pushing up. Guy on the right, I felt like I was gonna get behind the pillar. So what I could have done differently there is play it slower. There's no reason I need to sprint all the way up there without knowing where this guy was. 
I didn't need to do that. I also could have tried to dodge through this lane, but wasting my dodge without knowing if I'm going to get shot is kind of silly. So hindsight there, wait till my invis is out, check my radar, don't run through that lane unless I know I'm safe. I was going to go for this right angle again, but my dude shadow is with me. Oh, we might be able to help. God, we got one, but these scouts are just... Whew. He's going to go for the res. The hope is that my squad stops it. If they don't stop it, they do at least farm it. He's just patiently waiting. How do you feel about my multi-tool? It's actually pretty freaking good. I screwed that up. I should have been looking left with my teammate. But that works. Obviously, when you see a fireboat get thrown, you should back up. Here's me using cover. Something people don't do often enough. I'm weak. This guy's over there. This Only serves as cover. Only one I have left. no long range, so I have to figure out what to do. He's letting me get the revive, which is very nice of him. He's not going to have enough time to capture this. And now if he pushes me, he'll run into a smoke. Because I have no long range, though, I have to, like, run around and use all these walls for cover. He's running away, so the game's over, but... I'm just gonna go stand on the zone. When you run out of like your close range weapons or your long range weapons, it should change how you play. I have to get close to this guy in order to have any chance. In other words, if he's over there, I'm not gonna start running at him like this in the wide open where if he sees me, I'm just dead. I have to like use cover to kind of like get my way closer to him. So if we do engage, I'm close enough for my weapon to work. Here's a really important tip. And I've said it in previous commentary cards, but it's really important. My best tip for trials, any map, is reading the radar and understanding what map cover exists based off of the radar. In other words, if there's just like, let's just say there's a big object in the middle of the map. That is not protecting you if you stand here, if the enemies are here. That object's not in the way of y'all. They can shoot you, but you use radar. You recognize where they are and you use things on the map to put them, the enemies, and you put that object between y'all. Now it's your cover. That way you can peek from it to shoot at them, but if you're weak or need a second, you go back to it. That sounds like an obvious tip, but it's like my number one trials tip out of the entire freaking Trials of Osiris is learning how to use cover based off of where the enemies are. So like, all right, I know where they spawn. Obviously, this pillar serves as protection between them and me. But that is an example of what I could use as cover. Like right now, this wall is my cover. I'm weak. This guy understands it. This wall is cover. Still cover. I'm weak. I'm volatile. I'm waiting. They cannot shoot me because I know where they are looking at radar. I'm moving up now to a new spot where there is radar or where there is cover. I'm going to worm us dodge here because that messed me up bad. My nade got a kill, by the way. So I'm going to try to figure out where the enemy is. Using radar, and then wherever they are, wherever they end up being, although it looks like we're just going to get to cap, I get to use things on the map as cover. So let's say they're over there. Guess what's cover? This. But if they were over there, this would not be cover. I'd be in the freaking wide open. And just understanding that is so freaking crucial. This map is really awkward and really open. It's a little bit more difficult to understand where cover is at all times. This smoke should kill him. Nice. Smoke plus grenade. Okay, my teammate's pushing up, so I'm going to try to join him. I'm recognizing that radar ping is clone, so it's not actually a dude. Nice. Good kill. Invis shotgun. Good play. Nice little laggy connection there. Had I realized he had a shotgun, I would not have pushed him. That was only a play I made because we were 2v1. I thought maybe he had taken some damage from the teammates. If I'd known he had a shotgun, I'm not pushing him there. I also like to take different angles sometimes. I don't want to be too predictable. Ooh, so close. I have no opportunity to kill that guy, unfortunately. Kept him weak. Kept both of them weak. Meanwhile, the other dudes on my team got a kill. So we're in a good spot. Even if you don't get a kill, sometimes... You can do a really good job just keeping teeth. Okay, Dan, I'm going to shoot you. I'm sorry. Sometimes, friends, even if you don't get a kill, you can do a really good job for your team by just keeping enemies weak and distracted. Those dudes were focused on me. They were both tagged by me. It put them both out of the fight. So as long as I just survive and kind of hold my ground, my dudes worked on a 2v1 while I did that. You don't always have to work on getting kills. Keeping people weak and keeping them distracted can often be all you need to do. 
Meanwhile, it kind of looks like this game is over. The dude who we had blocked quit, and uh, these two dudes don't seem like they really want to play. Friends, if you are watching this on YouTube, please consider not only subscribing to the channel, consider sharing this video with friends, or even the coaching playlist this video is in. If you've got friends who play Trials and they're trying to get into it, and they don't understand the ins and outs of Trials and what to do, this playlist can be a really helpful playlist. And the number one way that I can have you support me on YouTube is by sharing this video. Ooh, Symmetry. Ooh, Symmetry might be super good on this map. I didn't think about that. You probably get the perk for hitting headshots up to seven somewhat often and then do the little two tap with the weird track mode. Okay, usually my teammates will go right on this side. And they're just following me. Okay, so this is no longer a flank. I'm gonna recognize that and not expect them to be distracted. I was kind of hoping to get an angle. No, he flinched me off the third headshot. Okay, I need to back up because of nades. My dude got a pick. Ah, crap. Okay, I don't know where it is. Can I see it? Yeah, let's put a smoke on it. Ah, we're just gonna have to figure out some way to 1v3 this and it's unlikely. Oh yeah, they're already capping the zone. It's very unlikely. Somewhat more possible now. He's behind me, so this is now my cover. Perfect. Like we talked about last game, dudes. Uh, cool, I'm glad they helped with that. This was my cover when they were in front of me, and then I go to the other side of it when they're behind me. Little things like that are make and break. Make or break in this game. Make or break. The same freaking pillar that was covered for me from one angle, I'd have to go to the other side for it to be covered once he moves positions. All right, I'm just gonna push up. Ooh, I'm glad I got that third shot back on him. Heal clip saved you? Oh, yeah. I am using... I'll talk about this roll that I'm using. I am using a heal clip, kill clip heliocentric because of my play style. I'm very good at pushing in and winning 1v1s in close range. Heal clip, kill clip allows me to, after a kill, reload, get some health back, and also get bonus damage on my next few seconds of shots. So I can combine that to get kill after kill after kill if I push in aggressively. Okay, so I notice there's a guy on the right, which means this dude is either alone or there's one other person with him. Feels more likely he's alone though, and I'm gonna try to capitalize. There's a guy pushing me, so I gotta be quick. I just got shot out of my hands. Okay, now we got heal clip, kill clip. So look, perfect. Ooh. So Chad, I tried to isolate this guy and I was correct. He was someone I could isolate. But once I saw on radar that there was a dude pushing from behind, now I've got a time pressure. I have to be ultra aggressive on killing the dude who's weak in front of me. Because if I hesitate, not only does he heal, but the two surround me. Trials is a complicated game. The more time you put into it, the more it has a chance to become second nature. But picking up on all those little things can often be the make or break in each round. Like, a lot of people... Oh, God. Oh, God. I probably shouldn't be jumping as a good shot. Oh, cool. oh that was close. I'm going to wait till... I got an overshield, but I'm still not full health, so I'm just going to wait. While he's distracted, I can push up. He's in the smoke. I should be able to grab heavy. This is a really good play on his part. I'm probably dead. Yeah. Him rushing right at me once I got a rocket was a really good play on his part. Trials is complicated. There's a lot of moving pieces. There's not just a simple do this and win, which is different from strikes, right? Raids, strikes, you can kind of get assigned roles. Hey, man, all you need is these weapons and look here and we'll win. When I say jump, you jump and we win. Trials is different. Sometimes you've got to push. When other times in the same position, you might need to get a new angle. We just lose this round, dude. They got a nade tracking us. They're on the zone. There's three of them. Not going to give them extra energy for super. So for trials, the way to get better is to practice and to try to like kind of learn little tips and tricks as you go. It happens a lot where someone will be a little too aggressive. I'll be like, hey man, next time like play a little bit more back. And then they'll play too far back and I'll die. And I'm like, hey dude, when I'm in a fight, try to help. And he's like, hey, you just told me to play back. And now you're telling me to play forward. Like what the fuck? And that's what's tough about trials is there's not a always do this answer. You've got to sort of pay attention to the details and understand what to do. Not easy. Like right now, I'm gonna try to stop this res. And uh, I'm not gonna push that because he should be able to get the revive. Now we're in a 3v1. 
If I overextend there, I put myself in a 1v1 I could lose. If I just wait for him to get the res, and now we're 3v1, we're not going to lose that. Understanding when it makes sense to guard a revive versus back off, like I just did. Versus when you have to push. Like if there were two people there surrounding me, I have to push that guy who's weak. Because there was only one, I don't have to do anything there. Okay, I got bowed. I'm going to worm us. He's not going to expect me to re-challenge. I thought that was going to be an opportunity for me. I'm going to tether. It's dangerous, but I want to do it. Oh, it's not dangerous. He's dead. I didn't realize Hanky Panky was on the perfect... Hanky Spanky on the perfect flank. Jake, how do you play around teammates that don't push anything? You don't always have a chance to play around teammates that don't push anything. There is some RNG in trials, of course. You'll sometimes get really rough teammates and really good opponents, and you'll just lose no matter what you do. Sometimes vice versa. You'll get great teammates and not so great opponents, and you'll win even if you stand on the back of the map. Usually... There is an opportunity for you to influence whether your team wins or loses. The better of a player you are, the more opportunity you'll have to influence the match in a positive way. Like there's maybe, I would say 5% of matches I play where I can't win no matter what. We'll have like three 2.0s on the other team and two .2s with me. And I'm like, I lose no matter what. But because I'm a pretty darn good player, there's very few matches where it's just like, I can't win no matter what. The best way to try to win is to play around your teammates. And sometimes your teammates are really passive. And if you're running out in front of them and dying, you're thinking, why are they in the back of the map, those jerks? And they're thinking, why is he running right at them? What an idiot. So trying to play around them is often important. If they're on the zone and you want to push the enemy team, you're just going to isolate yourself by doing it. You should probably play around the zone with your team. If your teammates are pushing them, even if you're on the zone and you're thinking, why are they pushing? Help them. Even if you think the right place to be on the zone, join your teammates who are pushing. You often can play around what your teammates are doing. Sometimes your teammates will make serious mistakes. And there's nothing you can do. But you often can play around it. I'm going to use my abilities to try to push in on this. Uh, I should have been using 4Runner. Okay, we still got it. Last guy on the left. Don't know if he has a shotgun or not. I'm down to let my teammates bait him. Meanwhile, while I'm waiting to figure out what he does, let's start capping the zone. One and we're 3v1. We got two people here. I'm fine staying here. I don't want to use 4Runner ammo. It's a valuable asset. All right, I am going to push to this pillar and try to look at radar. There's no one right. They're all left. Can I get a pick? Oh, I thought I could. This is now cover. It's between the enemies and me. We've got zone control. I'm not going to push them. They have to come to us. I've got a worm us dodge if I get in a bad spot. I can start capping to put the pressure on them. Here they go. They have to push. And we're just going to cap. This is what I'm saying, dudes. Like, Trials is such an adapt game. It's not always the play to stand on the zone there. But my teammates are with me. We're all three in the zone. They have to find a way to get to us. Why would I push and give them the opportunity to win all their fights by just defending? They have to figure out some way to push us there, and that's not easy. Okay, I'm going to get out of this. I'm going to wait till I've got more radar. I only have two Forerunner shots. So I can't win a long-range fight here, so I don't even want to waste it. Okay, we're about to get surrounded. This is awkward. I'm going to push here and see if there's a guy here. There is. I got bouncing throwing knife. Nothing I can do about that. Good luck, Mr. Loco. Nothing we can do about the bouncing knife. What I was hoping for is that I would push. There would be a guy on right. I'd shoot forerunner at him, which would scare him away, which is exactly what happened. And then I'd be able to use my close range sidearm to fight the next guy. I didn't want to jump up on that ledge and risk getting shotguns. I didn't pay close enough attention to their builds. This spike could do work. Okay, here I just want to guard heavy. I got a smoke there. Let's go, teammates. His pull's better than my uh, hand cannon from that far. So let's start pushing up. Get into a place where I have the advantage. Like right here. Okay, I'm kind of scared to run through this. They've been on the right a lot. And they are again. Got my worm husk. Willing to peek, recognizing I have cover. Now that guy's weak and defensive. I can push through. And there's two there. So I'm not committing to that fight. If he jumps up, I'm ready. Otherwise, I'll get my health back. Happy to join my teammate up here. This dude's way too far for my Igneous. I'm not in a good spot this round. And this is just because of my weapons. Yeah. I was going to take cover on left and go for a last word kill, but they got me. This outside zone probably is not a good enough zone for me to use Igneous. Oh, God. Okay. Well, free kill. Congrats, dude. 
I'm gonna swap what I'm talking about and explain revives real quick. In trials, when you revive somebody, they can't move for a full second, but they are damageable. If you're reviving somebody who's out in the open, you have to have already either fought off the enemy so they're not just standing there looking, or you have to immediately push in front and shoot. Okay, we're surrounded. I'm gonna go right. We should be able to take over the zone area. If you revive somebody who's out in the wide open, you're just giving the enemy team free kills. You're pissing off your teammates. You're giving the enemies free super energy. Oh, we're so boned. Okay, we gotta hope they just push us one at a time. I've got worm us, so I've kind of got an opportunity. Perfect, they push us one at a time. They're on the zone. While I get my health back, let's see if my smoke can help. Let's see if my spike can help. Worm us helped. I'm gonna start pushing up, using this pillar as my cover. Taking my time here. There's no rush. I've got zone. He doesn't. I've got worm us coming back the longer I wait. And that could be super helpful in a 1v1. So I'm just trying to get my worm us back. That's my only goal right now. Fight him off, get my worm us back. That's a good that's a really good melee. So we're back in a bad spot again. Push to this cover, see if we can get behind it. Keep using radar. He's going to my right, I go left. He's pushing behind me, I use cover again. Don't want to let him get to the revives though. This is such a fun 1v1, dude. This guy's doing a good job. This guy's doing a very good job. So I'm probably dead. He's got well. <laughs> I'm burning for a while, so we're in a rough spot. Just keep using cover. And now we got last word. Let's go for it. So, um, that guy did great. He was using all of his abilities and his weapons at their perfect range. He did everything right. And I think I did most things right too. Recognizing when there's not pressure gives you the chance to just play it slower. There was no pressure. The only pressure there was if he went towards the revives. That would have forced me to play aggressive. But because he wasn't near the revives for most of that, I gotta just take my time. That was a long one, dude. That was a long one. Meanwhile, we got a pick. Hopefully while... I'm just gonna use my super. He's actually gonna get well off. Whew. <laughs> Uh, normally using tether is not a good idea if they have well because if you don't kill the well he's gonna use it but they were so all over the place there i'm like dude i don't think they're gonna get away that was a game of attrition right there it was tougher because he was a solar lock he had me burning so often he made my regen way worse that 1v1 was a great example though of why i like high recovery if i had tier one recovery if i focused on resilience like so many people say like just do mobility resilience you use worm husk. well every time i didn't have my dodge it would have taken me forever to get back in the fight and that dude's burning basically made it so my recovery felt like it was lower and that's why it's so tough to have low recovery this guy has bow summoner all right they have a wish under they can see through walls and hit some very good damage from far one dude's got both long-range weapons. They only have one close-range thing to be worried about. It's conditional. If the Titan's down, I can push with no fear. However, I do have fear of a bow, but this dude's pushing right, so I'm going to push with him. Oh, my God. I was trying to push with him so we could team shot that guy, and we did. I just think he might have worm husk dodged. That's the guy with conditional, but he smoked in the face. Heal clip, kill clip, worm husk. They don't know I'm behind him, so I'm going to get closer. And you are going to be dead now. Yeah, he does have one of us that did save him. Because they didn't know where I was there, dudes, I waited an extra second to engage. I have a super low range sidearm on here. So if I start shooting them from while I'm kind of far away, I give them time to turn around and kill me. If I wait till I'm closer and then I start shooting, I'm going to be dealing some massive damage and they are not going to have time to do anything about it. Okay, well, my dude with the bow won. I know there's another guy weak there. Okay, both of them are... Whoa. Um, sometimes you die. Sometimes you'll die so fast, cover won't even help you. I'm gonna look left this time. There ain't no one there. Oh, there is. So there's two left. Does that mean there's no one, right? So now this is our cover. And I can push up to the wall. And now this is our cover. Now there's a guy alone on left. And he's dead. Now there's two on right, but one is a bow. So guess what I'm not gonna do? Challenge. 
Well, now there's only one of them I will. Hello, friend. My dude with the bow is going crazy. You're playing against low KD players? That never happens to me? Okay. One of my biggest pet peeves is people thinking that me getting flawless is based on luck. Drives me nuts. The world's not out to get you, friends. I promise you, sometimes you will have some bad luck and you will match with good players on the enemy team and not so good players on your team. That will happen sometimes, but it doesn't happen always. The world's not out to get you when it's trying to just save me. For those who didn't see this, uh, the first card this morning, what a wonderful opportunity for me to remind y'all that I made it to my flawless game with like a 6.5 KD on the first card today. And guess what happened? I lost the next three matches and didn't go flawless. One of those games, I went 15 and five and we lost. One of those games, I went 12 or 13 and five and we lost. You know what I didn't say? Oh my god, I always have the bad luck. Every time I'm on Flawless, I get the bad luck. No, I just realized it was bad luck for that game, dude. Like, we had bad luck that game. Sometimes there's nothing you can do about it. But the why me, it's always me, and you always get lucky mentality drives me nuts. You want to go Flawless more often? Try to improve your skills. This should not be some crazy moment, dude. You go into a match, it's 50-50 that you win. You know what the indicator of whether you have more odds of winning or less odds of winning? Your skill. You, you are the only constant in your trials matches. So if you play 200 matches of trials in a weekend and you win 30 times and you're saying I had horrible luck, bullshit. You did not have horrible luck. You know why you lost 170 and 130? Because you're less than the average player in terms of skill. That is me not talking shit. I'm talking pure logic. Pure logic, pure reason. I don't care if you're not good at Destiny. I'm not giving you shit. There's no reason you have to be good at Destiny. But it's not luck that made you lose 170. It's not. By your logic, you should fail half your cards? Nope, that is not true. Because I am a constant on my team, and I am a 2.5 player, and I win 90% of my matches. So no, by my logic, I should not fail half my cards. Because I, as the constant in my matches, I am always on my team. And therefore, I help me win way more than 50% of the games. Yes, sometimes you will lose a match. Purely because of bad luck. But always? That's always why you can't get flawless? Because the matchmaking's rigged against you? That is not true. 